Hey kids, welcome to unit two, lesson four, constructors, exercise number two. We have a choose your own adventure lesson, kids. As always, kids, I would encourage you to do as many of these as you can and challenge yourself to especially do the harder ones. I'm going to go ahead and do the second one, number B, next to the bodega. Let's see what we have to do. First, we have to import our Painter Plus. Then it looks like in Painter Plus, we're going to write a parameterized constructor for the Painter Plus class. Note the parameterized constructor for the Painter class is public Painter. We have our int x, int y, string direction, and int pate. In the body of the constructor, we're going to call super with the parameters x, y, direction, and paint. And then inside my neighborhood, we're going to instantiate a painter plus object called my painter plus at the location 09 facing north with 10 units of paint. And should be down there. Hmm. Well, that doesn't sound too bad. I know my painter plus file is pretty good. So I know we can go right to my backpack, hit painter plus and import that one. Make sure to take a look and the code is up to date. Looks like it got everything. Next, we're going to write a parameterized constructor for the painter plus class. And if you look at this little graphic right here, you can see what we're doing is we're going to call the X coordinate, the Y coordinate, the string direction, and the amount of paint we have left. And we're going to use our old friend super because we need to get those painter constructors. So we're going to super X, Y direction and paint. Where are we going to do that? Well, I'm going to go all the way to the bottom here. You know how I like to write end of class and go right above that. Ooh. Get rid of that. Give us a little more room. And tab over. Now what we need to do is write the method signature. And this isn't much different than we've been doing. It's going to be public. Are we creating our own method or class here? No. This is much like if you look up top when we called the painter constructors here. This, by the way, we were calling a default or no parameter constructor. We're going to do the same thing down here. So we're going to skip the class. We're going to go painter plus. And then we are going to do our little parentheses and curly cues. What goes inside here? Well, if you remember back to that graphic, I just have to declare my data type and then the variable name. So that's just an int x, int y. For the direction, that's a word, so that's a string. And then I'm going to do a direction. And then the amount of paint, that's usually one, two, three, four, five, six. That's another int we're going to call paint. Those are the constructors. If we remember up top when we did super with our no parameter constructor, we just left it empty. Well, if we want to call those constructors, we probably actually have to call them. So let's do another super here. And this is going to have a semicolon after it. And we were just going to do that X, Y, direction, and paint. We just want to call those painter constructors. And that's it. We use super with the parameters X, Y, direction, and paint. Now we have to go over and instantiate our object. Let's go over to my neighborhood. Let's go down here. Let's tab over. And let's create our object. How do we create this? Well, we are the painter plus subclass and it's my painter plus, and that equals a new 
painter plus. Normally, we'd keep that empty, right? But now we have coordinates we can give it and a direction and amount of paint. And it tells us right there. It wants us in the X at zero, the Y at nine, the direction to be north, and the amount of paint to be 10. That's it, kids. That's as hard as it gets. Let's go ahead and hit run and see if we get it right. There's our little painter created perfect. We have a bunch of key takeaways from this lesson. First, we learned what a no argument constructor is, and we learned we've been calling that. That was that super that we've been using since lesson four. Next, we talked about what a parameterized constructor was. And if you look, what it is, is the X, Y direction in paint. And you can notice under the hood here, how this is written, X location equals X. And what are we calling? X. Why aren't we calling X location? Because that's set to private. So this is starting to show you how we use those accessor methods to get to those private instance variables. And finally, it's learning just how to use those parameters when creating an object. An important thing here that I didn't talk about is if we give it four parameters, it needs to have four parameters. If I fail to give it one of those, it'll throw an error. That's what it's looking for while it's debugging. Finally, it's just drilling down a little deeper into what exactly those private instance variables are, why we have them, and how we can access them. And this is one way we can do it. And we're gonna keep peeling that onion back, kids, and you're gonna start seeing more and more of that code as we progress through this lesson. Hopefully you found this video helpful in understanding what a no argument constructor is and how to write a constructor with arguments. As always, if you have any questions, come see me kids. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next lesson. See you later kids, bye.